We lock 10 people in a half a basketball court. The last one to poo wins a billion dollars. All these people are getting mad at Mr. Beast. The next video is, I made a thousand able seeing people blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah I've got it up. People are good bushels. <laughs> Uh, uh, only uh, old. It also says a lot that some guy gets cancer and then looks like Jordan Peterson. What's the name of the Russian palace in Moscow called? Uh, Whatever. The Raj Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> Dielinski turns up. He's got like a tray of a blanket over it and he pulls it off and there's just 12 Aunt Bessie Yorkshire buddies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have one on me, lad. Fraser's dad had a stroke and you gave him an Xbox. He can only use one half of the controller. <laughs> oh, you sick. I don't know why, but it just made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> really? And I'm like, mate, like, you are a brave man to post that on your TikTok account. Quite sad. Hello, Smegheads. How you doing? Welcome back to another episode, which we're now dubbing a season two. Nothing's changed. Firstly, <laughs> I um I don't know whether to be uh, concerned what's going on here because Aiden tells me that he's got a, a TikTok account which I haven't really seen much of where he he's been going around our local town of Lowestoft terrorizing the civilians because <laughs> he's been doing right. Spider Man impressions. <laughs> you little freak. Well, it's actually in draft mode. I haven't released it yet because it needs it needs some finishing touches. So, so you're that ashamed of it? Then, it can't. needs some finishing touches. Do you want to just show me this? Because sort of <laughs> I I don't exactly know what you mean by. You've been going, you've been Spider Man around lower stuff. You've got to think, ladies and gentlemen. Someone's got to stop 50p, Chris, hasn't he? <laughs> you got Spider Man's meant to be the hero, mate. <laughs> uh, so you've got to think, ladies and gentlemen, whilst Aiden gets this up. Lower stuff is a horrific place to be. It's, uh, everyone there is, it's not doing well. It's probably one of the most impoverished places of the country. And you've got little Aiden running around whilst people are struggling trying to beat Tom Holland. Spider Man really missed the mark and the fact that he wasn't dressed as a <laughs> League One footballer. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right okay should, should, should we take a look at this <laughs> go on i am really fat in this this is doing a lockdown <laughs> you're big old, you're this big is doing lockdown mate this is what happened to my mental state <laughs> <Doing lockdown>. <laughs> <laughs> what the f this mate mate <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I thought you meant you were going round lower stuff. <laughs> you are such a sad. <laughs> is, that, is that an audio? What, what was going through your little peanut brain whilst you were making this? <laughs> that guy fell on the face. Anyway, Can you see the face that's I put? It, that's it, that's Let me it. Let up. <laughs> what the f <gasps> What's with the tongue? Mate, you genuinely seem really focused about this. You seem... Everybody in school, right? There was always that, like, e no. back in the day when everyone had, like, Facebook and stuff. Yeah. Everyone would be very conversational. It was, like, very much a community. But you'd always have a few freaks on there. Yeah. Uh, who would just upload really <laughs> weird videos of themselves. And that that is what you've become. No viewers have actually found this. Which, have any of your, yeah. uh, like, fellow uh, employees found this? Because I think that uh, if I if I was working with somebody and I found this... Mate, I'd be booted out of the office. <laughs> thrown out of the first floor. <laughs> Mate, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm just giving Aunt Bessie a little kiss. Did she give you a smooch back? <laughs> oh, she, mate, she did every first day at uni because you know what that was? Jam roly poly night. <laughs> What's jam roly poly night? <laughs> We'd go to the. There was like an Asian superstore next to the. Uh, where we live, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they always sold one pound Aunt Bessie jam roly polies. What? What? They have they have uh, Aunt Bessie in in parts of Asia. Mate, Aunt Bessie is world a worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> no, I, I I genuinely didn't wouldn't think that Aunt Bessie is it found anywhere outside the United <laughs> Mate, Kingdom. Aunt Bessie serves jam roly poly and <laughs> every night of the week. And, and what? And come? <laughs> you say come? She serves. <laughs> <laughs> what? She serves. <laughs> If there was anything that was gonna like establish peace between Ukraine and, and Russia, <laughs> it's it's uh, Zelensky turns up to the what, what's the name of the Russian palace in Moscow called? Uh, Whatever the Raj Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Hey, Zelensky turns up. He's got like a tray of a blanket over it, and he pulls it off, and there's just twelve Aunt Bessie Yorkshire puddings. Yeah. You guys have one on me, lad. Mate, Aunt Bessie. Is Elite. She can do Yorkshire puddings, jam roly polies, spotted real... dick, and she's great at head. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the spot dick part wasn't actually the food. <laughs> no. <laughs> we just started naming body parts. That was my, part. my diseased wiener. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that was the first wait, one I did. Wait, wait, but was Aunt Bessie a real... Is she actually a real human that's existed in our in our world? Is I don't think she's a real thing. It's like the colonel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was there the colonel from KFC a real man? Mate, she's like the equivalent of Mary Berry. She doesn't exist. Mary Berry, the colonel, <laughs> and Aunt Bessie just having a threesome. Right, that's my next one. Cool. <laughs> what did you, why'd you say that? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just came to my brain. Right. Whenever we click record on these things, things just... We haven't even really said hi. Uh, hello, welcome back to another episode, by the way. I know we said that, but we didn't say how... We didn't ask him how the day's been or how's oh, your day been. Well, has, your, has your week been good? Yeah, I'm having an all right week, yeah. yeah been yeah. to a comedy night. Yeah. I, uh... I don't... Uh, let's get, just get on with That's it. Yeah, 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 carry on. Yeah, yeah. We haven't anyway. been up to much, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> end mate, on Charlie mate, Adam that is the saddest okay <laughs> mate, <laughs> mate Bill when he finds out he's gay <laughs> <laughs> when he reached in for that smooch Bill when he got his first sucky sucky from that guy <laughs> the next. when I worked at my bar in uni I couldn't get away from customers telling me I looked like James Corden yeah you, uh, really you, upset I, everyone, me and we get comments saying it but I just don't think you do you don't well I do in this video the transition from the two photos is actually quite sad. This is like a really good representation of how like lockdown affected people. <laughs> yeah. can, Mate, can, it gets can, worse. Can, can you this show us is, some more? Um, I had quite an obsession with the Scots Home Early M&M's advert. Yeah, we were going to speak about the M&M's ad advert, and this is pretty much a good transition into it. So uh, yeah. sh show, show me show me what you got. Scott, it's not what it looks like. You're going to eat more of us, weren't you? Now the Biden makes sense. Scott's home early. Mate, all I can say <laughs> is I see why. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep that in, but there we... is, uh, there's quite a lot of skeletons in my closet. Did you have a girlfriend at that moment of time? Georgia was my girlfriend. Yeah. Still is. Big up, George. Um, we really appreciate the fact that you've managed to stay stay through, through all of this. Yeah, you've done well looking after me, keeping yeah. me in check. Yeah, she is like your carer, pretty much. Yeah, I've, like, I've, I've come out on the, a better side, I think. Whenever I, we do anything or say anything, I always think, like, our girlfriends must look at the things we say on this podcast. And, but I, I don't even know if they both listened. I don't know if Georgia listens. Cuss sometimes tunes in. But I think they must listen and think... These guys are the. These are the men that we've chosen to to, to, think, to lay with. I think this is a good outlet for me, to be honest. Because yeah. if I was saying this sort of to Georgia every day, it, it would end quickly. I, I think. think it would, but like it would with any other person. Yeah, I I, I think this is like a place where every, once a week we can just gather around and just say the most stupid things that possibly come to our mind. And I think that's what's the beauty of it, to be honest. Yeah, with if you. I was dating anyone and I said, "What do you think of Moses like?" jobs it's not going to go far is it why it, it's just in? i don't understand whenever we record this just things come to my mind that wouldn't come to my mind that are regular you just mentioned most things that blow so i'm thinking has <laughs> did the m m's <laughs> the m m group ever not m m but the m m's group ever have like a threesome with most like a they ain't got genitals yeah I, you never know they're, they're some <laughs> modern science and all <laughs> <laughs> this day and age if you want to identify as an m m <laughs> A lot of people have been actually quite mad recently. It's a good transition. Pe not like that, but like if the, if the M&Ms want to transition, they're more than welcome to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've but, got nothing wrong with the M&Ms transitioning. Yeah, and people have recently been a bit mad because uh, M&Ms have been... I don't know what actually happened. I haven't done the research. It has. It's not even planned speaking about it, but I saw that people were mad that the M&M ad has been pulled, but also the reason it was pulled was because people were upset that there was a lesbian chocolate mascot or something. I think it was like the brown M&M was, was, a, was a lesbian in relationship with like the green m m or something like that and they have like hot hardcore lesbians <laughs> sloppy whoppy this is just a sort of discourse that like takes away any serious point from anything doesn't it well a lot There's of a lesbian m m I think... and as the advert's been pulled i think the conservatives got really mad because they actually put like a <laughs> they put like a press like a press post out there they in, fact, in fact i'm gonna pull this up because this is just like with everything going on with like Who, the did this M and M's, the, yeah, not M and M. Who like, did the post? M and M's themselves. They oh, came. Right, okay. So the Conservatives were really mad that um, <laughs> I've searched M and S. I don't need a, 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 a meal deal right now. Um, hold on. The Conservatives were really mad that M and M's were gay, pretty much, and they they <laughs> they caved on their Twitter page. M and M stands for Minge and Minge. <laughs> Minge and Minions. Minge Minions. Minge Minions. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, 
mate, mate, this is genuinely the most dystopian post I've ever seen in my entire life. So I think that is meant to be the the the, the gay. M&M. Oh no, I have I have read that actually, yeah. and I had no idea what they were talking about. Yeah. So basically, they they've made it so the M and M's have been shagging each other, and people weren't happy. So they've said, "America, let's talk." In the last year, we've made some changes to our beloved spokes candies. We weren't sure if anyone would know. It. <laughs> to be honest, mate, if if chocolates started eating each other out, I think people would start to notice. People are starving to death, Fraser. <laughs> 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 there is like actual people f- we've got we've got we've got a space where we can uh you know give messages of hope <laughs> and you know tell tell people about the important things in the world to thousands of people <laughs> but and we're talking about m M&M scissoring <laughs> shockingly enough though this all it always comes back down to whenever there's some stupid gay shit in the news it always comes <laughs> down to this f- sad man the green m M&M, you will notice is sexy every person on earth knows this is true we are born knowing it very few are brave enough to say a word about it he's taken the divorce well isn't he <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if this was a real news report but i genuinely wouldn't be sure should, should we see if this is a real thing i'm Mate, sure we can i can't pull... look at that video it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's given it's given me a chub on <laughs> imagine you go into like a strip club <laughs> and you're ex- you're expecting some real <laughs> some real Mate, you know <laughs> some real some real hot babes. You know what I want to see when I walk into a strip club? <laughs> yeah. This. <laughs> This is I why I spent about two hours making that. <laughs> that video is why there is a mental health crisis in this country right now. Also, you know you were speaking about the new Harry Potter game coming out. Yeah. I've actually got a Harry Potter inspired TikTok. Oh, go on, go on. But I can't tell if you're like 14 there or 27. <laughs> well, mate, I'm not 27 now. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> you could have been some some time time. I'll tell mate. you what I was. <laughs> yeah. Very depressed, mate. It was that during lockdown. I think I was off the meds at that point. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I want to move back into <laughs> Tucker Carlson just wants M&Ms to be sexy again. <laughs> the orange M&M, meanwhile, became a poster boy for the mental health crisis and would henceforth, quote, acknowledge and embrace his anxiety. <laughs> what the f- the orange M&M what got the- to be anxious about? What is it's, just a, it's just a little chocolate fella. <laughs> what is your favorite type of m and uh, The sexy ones. <laughs> the sexy ones. Yeah, because no, as I said, you walk, you don't expect to walk into an, into a strip club and you see a nice little M&M sliding on the pole. <laughs> I like the peanut ones and I also like the pansexual ones. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is there a pansexual M&M? Probably like purple or something. I don't know, mate. Yeah, let's, let's see what Tucker's got to say. Then late last year, Mars went further. The company added obese and distinctly frumpy lesbian M&Ms to promote, quote, feminism and body positivity. What did he just say? <laughs> obese and frumpy? <laughs> frumpy m and <laughs> Frumpy M&Ms. What does frumpy mean? <laughs> That's something I call your mum. <laughs> frumpy. <laughs> your, your frumpy old mum. Frumpy is what you call a fat woman that smells. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically a f***ing dinner lady. <laughs> Wait, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it doesn't just apply to women, actually. From people, <laughs> yeah, that's very. Ver- we, I'm we, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, to all the girlies listening, you you are you could be frumpy, but also be frumpy. Uh, Aiden's dad also could be frumpy. Uh, my dad uh, probably is frumpy because he had a stroke last week. Yeah, your dad. No, <laughs> mate, your dad's slumpy because <laughs> he can't move half his body. <laughs> God bless the NHS. Uh, Fra- Fraser ge- Fraser's dad had a stroke and you gave him an Xbox. He can only use one half of the <laughs> controller. <laughs> you sick. <laughs> He, he's just f***ing spamming the B button. <laughs> yeah. Constantly shooting. <laughs> no, no, no. All he can do is press the RT button and he's just throwing grenades and yeah. fucking blowing himself up. He, he rings me up angry. He, can, he can't f***ing get the words out. He, he's just g- g- grenade. He hasn't explode. Mate, he has not survived one game of Among Us yet. <laughs> It was pretty sus when he had a stroke. <laughs> pretty sus, yeah. Uh, if you do, if you guys didn't know the law of this, my dad had a stroke two weeks. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. The law of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is the law in the Ayn Abba story. Uh, but yeah, yeah that, uh, that daddy. Uh, had a, I shouldn't say his name. Uh, uh, Papa Nabs had grandpappy Nabs had a um, 
had a stroke. Yeah, big old mate, big old. Yeah, this is probably the best way to to deal with it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, let's just laugh at yours. <laughs> <laughs> can't keep that in. <laughs> I like when it's beeped and uh, I have to guess what I've said. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> we're stroking nonsense for <laughs> let's keep. Let's go back on to... Right, back to Tucker Carlson. It is quite quite a strange world, isn't it? <laughs> what, what the f*** is this? <laughs> Tucker's CNN was infuriated about this. Tucker responds to Eminem spokes Candy's fallout. We reported on this at the time and pledged a deeper investigation into it. But before we could complete our investigation, Mars announced that it's suspending its ad campaign. A chocolate vendor promoting obesity was just too shameless, even by modern standards. He's I don't know much about Tucker Carlson. Is he a serious guy? Uh, he's, he is. And I, I, I well, you got to think, this is the same country that did elect John, Donald Trump, right? Mm. And I'm not just saying that to say, like, be like Orange Man bad, but it is a pretty good representation of No, mate, because Orange Man actually he represents... Is bad. <laughs> Orange I, Man represents anxiety in the M&M's world. Which <laughs> 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 says a lot, doesn't it? These conservatives always bring this, like, insane of like yeah the m ms are these like it, like they represent mental health and, and certain sexualities and stuff i don't think a single left-wing person has ever actually cared about this until the conservatives brought this up i did not know that the m ms were shagging each other until tucker carson <laughs> let me know i knew that the m ms were shagging humans in the scots home early advert but you were saying the scots scottish islands or something there, but yeah, you finished mate, i didn't know they were like bumming each other but Honestly, it doesn't matter, does it? Mate, if Eminem wants to shag somebody, he's more than welcome to. Just wait till you hear about the jelly babies, mate. That's <laughs> <laughs> mate, the jelly babies are f***ing cannibals. That's messed up. That is messed up. Mate, that what? is a... <laughs> <laughs> that's a dark path. <laughs> oh my god oh jeez i just realized uh, they're called jelly babies jeez. yeah they're little jelly bait they're babies made of jelly i'm so sorry you just talk <laughs> say that I, i'm gonna bleep that as well um i yeah. didn't i didn't uh, jelly baby trigger warning <laughs> i can't keep that any <laughs> uh no, um, it's not nineteen. Content was quite good it's, a couple minutes ago. It's not 1942 anymore, don't worry. Uh, let's, let's try and get Yeah, the way back to the M&M's. company added obese and distinctly frumpy lesbian M&M's to promote, quote, feminism and body positivity. In other words, explained the Mars Corporation, it's good to be fat. Have some more M&M's. I mean, what the f*** did he expect? It's chocolate. I mean, is it there to make you obese, is it not? Oh, uh, God forbid the chocolate company promote chocolate. Yeah, I, <laughs> I to, be, to be fair, mate, I didn't realize that chocolate made you fat but this is this is groundbreaking stuff you gotta think right <laughs> these are the people that regularly win elections i know biden won the last one but it's like it's a sad state of affairs where this is actually like the popular opinion like people genuinely like love this yeah well the reason they do it is that so people don't actually care about important things in the world yeah i, th I think it's also because like when you when it comes to like things like i don't know like fat acceptance lgbtq plus issues they put these stories out so like when people hear like when the average homophobic person hears about some gay story they're like oh uh, i don't want my m and sucking yeah, each other well, that's it. it's like when um they want to like push their agenda as to why they disagree with something they, they give people the most extreme sort of <laughs> ridiculous examples of honestly it. mate if i was homophobic and i found m and were like just smooching each other on the lips yeah i think that is one thing that would genuinely make me uh be gay to be honest imagine with you. getting like full-on angry at some <laughs> m&m's kissing do you reckon like conversion therapy in america is they just bring out some m&m's and just shove them in your face and say you're gonna become this if you don't well, stop uh, they get two m&m's out and they just like you know when you get two dolls yeah well i don't know if i i, I don't i'm not saying i do this but you know when people you know it's a thing to get dolls and like pretend to get them to make out. Yeah. Do you reckon conversion therapy is just someone getting two M and M's out and just going? <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a point of time where I thought this podcast would go places, and I've got you, and you don't even have an M and M in your hand right now. You just air f kissing a fake M and M, and 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 you think this podcast? We said this is season two. This is season zero point five. Wait, mate. We're going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine paying money to see me sit in a room and do that. I, I you have. You've paid 60 quid for me to come from the other stuff and sit in a room and do this. I wanna, I wanna Big old mate, mate, tell you what, I've taken you for a mug. <laughs> I thought it couldn't get any worse than when you had me over a bag of frozen Richmond sausages <laughs> and said Merry Christmas, mate. But I, I, how I was f severely wrong. I cannot wait to see the video come out, the downward spiral of Aiden. <laughs> 
downward spiral of Aiden Glizzy. Let's move on from M&M's. <laughs> Let's move on. From oh, right, okay. <laughs> <we're, all> right. <laughs> I think that made a good clip. Uh, <laughs> Title it Gay M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> Mum, yeah. I'm so sorry if, if, you, if you're watching this. And Dad, um, the, uh, he's probably had a second stroke. That's what I'm saying. But moving on, <laughs> re- re- recently you sent me a Facebook post. <laughs> Actually, can I go for a pee first? Yeah, you can go for a wee. Yeah, I've, I've been drinking too much water. One second. Hello, Smegheads. We're back. I um, I have not eaten enough carbohydrates today, but I feel juiced up. I feel sexy yeah, and Fra- free. Fraser got up, picked up a yogurt, and just started doing laps. No, I didn't. I, I, <laughs> I went outside and ate the yogurt, and then I went back to the fridge and ate some grapes. Because I, <laughs> I, I start, I, when, I, when we finished that recording, I don't know why, but I think the full process of Tucker Carson and a lot of LGBT obese M&Ms really kind of mate, made you, me feel a bit, a, bit, a bit dizzy. Mate, you were doing laps of your flat. <laughs> I was not. You were, I thought you were playing Mario Kart. Mate, mate, the reason I was doing it was, there were, there were reasons. I was a hungry little boy, all right? So we've, I think we've brought it up before on this podcast, but on a, I think every single hometown on Facebook has a group where everyone from that town joins, mainly the older people. Yeah, then, Facebook got overtaken by boomers, didn't it, in the last decade? And yeah. they, like, it's just turned into, like, loads of local little community <laughs> groups. And it's just horrific every it's, single time it's like every, an absolute cesspit like you cannot go in those groups and 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 not find anything horrific and we've got one where it's called some well, well we won't name the, t- the we won't name the group directly there was like a war and it wasn't there. <laughs> there, was, there was a war and uh they had there, there was an offset group created where it's the same name as the group the original group but it's got in brackets minus the snowflake admin. yeah basically what happened is people were posting too much like horrific racist things yeah so like the admins decided to... Del- Somebody was like, that's a, for, Keith, that's a little bit too racist for me. I can't, yeah. I can't lie. Because I think the first group, you didn't used to have like admin approval. Yeah. It's a free fall. And I think they introduced it because, as I said, people were just posting pictures of like... Just, know, just some terrible just things. Like, yeah, just not basic nasty stuff no one needs to see. It is pretty good of them, though, to create a place where the police can easily track them for all of their <laughs> yeah. behaviour. Well, the real reason we're speaking about this is because Aiden found a post which she said... Oh, no, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, so basically, some like, this bloke wrote a book right i think someone wrote a book about his horrible divorce that yeah. he went through let me read this post so somebody <laughs> uh, we'll just call him uh we'll call him jeff yeah names. and we'll call the other person sandra jeff posts i'm a local divorce dad with two wonderful children who's decided to write a book about divorce i know that doesn't sound like a fun topic for a child can you imagine being a kid and you're like <laughs> well you, you, you you've got your first book you're thinking is it lord of the rings it's harry potter it's <laughs> jeff from lost Off's book about his in divorce. Imagine if you're his kid and you get that for Christmas. It's like, oh, cheers, Dad. What's, the, <laughs> what's, what's, what's this? Oh, I've written about why your mum doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a book. It's just like a memoir <laughs> <laughs> like that mate he has not took that to a publisher <laughs> that, that nobody has seen this book other than his kid at that very moment <laughs> it's just tears on a page <laughs> he, just, he just opens it up and it's just like his dad can daily write about how he wants to kill his mum <laughs> sorry I get it blood. Blood. it's actually just like a f- death note um, so he goes my family my family was shattered in 2020 a combination of factors including my mental health ended a 12 year relationship it was hard for all involved but more devastatingly it was a confusing difficult and stressful time despite our best efforts for our children but now we have rebuilt these ruins and co-parenting two happy and wonderful children now, that's absolutely lovely isn't it the goal of the book is to basically help other people who have been in that situation and so it's like it's something I wouldn't be bothered to read but it's harmless it's quite a nice little post promoting it yeah, honestly, like I'm not. I know we're making jokes, but it's a, it's a nice little thing you've it's done, safe. Jeff. I mean, if that was the entire post, we wouldn't be here talking about it. In spawn, Sandra. So, so Sandra comes in. <laughs> so yeah, he puts the post in there, and then says Sandra comments saying, "You're not the first. Most certainly won't be the last. Get up, crack on, and get over it. Get over it." <laughs> Imagine your tw- twelve years of marriage, divorce. <laughs> just get over it. And then David comes in and he says, "Lol, who hurt you?" And Sandra claps back, saying, "No one. Your parents live your grief now through the children. Man up, move on." <laughs> it's Blood, like, yeah, that is hardcore. Somebody isn't it? really shat in Sandra's cornflakes. I think it's a really good representation of these groups because this poor this poor bloke's probably spent years writing this book. Yeah. Imagine you finally finish your masterpiece, your life's work, 
and you just get Sandra from Lowestoft telling you to man up and but get... That's the thing. Sandra once again confirming that a lot of adults just think that people aren't allowed to have feelings, yeah. which is quite sad in all honesty, isn't it? <laughs> well, what is... Uh, should we have a look at little Sandra's profile picture? Oh, no, it's just her. I used to, like... Um, I created a troll account, and I just used you to did. go into these pages. You would go in there and just say the most... Sh- <laughs> like, the, the most mess... And I, I feel sorry, because there are, like, some 60-year-old dears in that group, and they're... It wasn't you know, that bad. I just <laughs> go... I'll just go in and post, like... Hey, how you, to steam broccoli and no, stuff no, like no. that. Let's, let's not be hasty here, mate. You were like a f***ing Facebook group terrorist. You were going in there <laughs> just saying the most... You were just a f***ing little nuisance. Eh? I, what uh, was your name on there? What did you give your stupid name? Uh, Wendy Bonkers Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the account's still there, mate, if you want to look at it. All right, let's get it up. Have you got oh, up? Yeah, I've got it up. You f***ing <laughs> work at bushels. Okay, <laughs> 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 only oh, old... On the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that where every old woman works? Me, Isn't that fucking like Mrs. Brown something? Or what was it called again? Mrs. Brown Mrs. Boys? Brown. Yeah, Mrs. Brown boys. Who cares? Well, I got any statuses? Let's look at the profile picture. So you were you were bang on the money. <laughs> you okay. <laughs> I just stepped in a big pile of Monday. That minion looks wired. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is, mate, you were you were twenty twenty big years, twenty big years of age when you made this profile. But not only yeah. that, <laughs> the, pro- the the bio <laughs> says. Oh, I can't remember the bio. What have I put? It says. It says. Widow spelled with two Ds. <laughs> Spend. Widow spent spent time with my son Jules. No one knows what you're saying. Widow Widow spent time with my son Jules and lifelong friend Maggie. <laughs> Jules and Maggie. <laughs> the fuck is Maggie? Hi. She's actually just got like severe dementia and she's been watching The Walking Dead and she's convinced she's convinced Maggie is a friend and she's got four mutual friends she's got four friends and they are all everyone we know <laughs> are uh, you one of them no I'm not I this is a this was made before my current Facebook account but let's um if I search your name will it come out of any posts <laughs> yeah. you uh, uh, oh god <laughs> fucking state of you <laughs> <laughs> the f***ing state. <laughs> what does it say? That, it goes, so firstly, for some law, we have a club, we had a club in a lot of stuff called Faith, and it was so. And uh, Aiden on the, t- on the 29th of June 2018 has gone into the lowest off group, which we... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he said, he says, he says, think faith should have a 16 plus, uh, 60 plus year old night, ridiculous, went in there last week. And, and got caught a tart, <laughs> nearly jumped out of my dress and f- <laughs> I can't call the top. <laughs> and you, you nearly uh, jumped out of your dress in fear. <laughs> and and when D Bonkers Brown just wants a good night out. <laughs> That's all and she a, wants. And a f***ing <laughs> Bev replies, giving genuine advice. Bev says, see the poster for the Lowest of Football Club. Not for over 60s, but not just the young and even <laughs> Raising awareness for mental health. And then Steve, the f***ing bellend, comes along and says, what language are you typing in? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then people, someone then has gone actually to genuinely give you a place to go. Um, and, then, and then... Did I reply? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, all right. I, 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 I didn't look, 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 Just look at your f***ing reply there, you sick man. You've got a genuinely concerned citizen there. You're, Where you're, am I? You're f- oh, I'm not in this. Look, yeah, you are. There you are. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, what was that? Wait, sorry. I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, some, some, <laughs> s- s- somebody has actually really gone. Joe, Joe has really gone out to defend you. Look at that 
paragraph she's written. Not just girls, Carly. You have to only read the comment on from here. Do people think it's funny to mock someone who clearly can't write well? That's I, so harsh on Wendy as well. I think I think if someone is dyslexic or has a learning disability, you've never even clarified it. Mate, what, what a backhanded compliment <laughs> that is to Wendy Bonkers Brown. You might just be shit at spelling. Wendy Bonkers Brown has just put a post about how she was phys- like verbally assaulted in faith. <laughs> Got called a tart. <laughs> and now, she's, now she's been called <laughs> dyslexic. And someone's gone, leave this disabled person alone <laughs> in the comments. I honestly would say that's like ableist in itself. <laughs> this is so <laughs> stupid. Uh, and then uh, so somebody replies <laughs> a f***ing meme. What? Speak English. <laughs> Look what I put, I replied. <laughs> Listen here, Steve. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right, let's see if um, let's see if Wendy Bonkers Baron has any any, any more sh- uh, stupid posts. I think a lot of them got deleted. <laughs> no, it didn't. It's not about I've, the air show. On I've, there. <laughs> How many likes did I get? <laughs> it got 145 likes. I know. You said like if you think the air show t- should come back to lower stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then you put your feeling as feeling air show should <laughs> come back to lowest st- and then I've stretched it <laughs> <then, and> <laughs> 12 <laughs> shares <laughs> hello uh, it's just me again just interjecting here to say could you please subscribe to the YouTube channel because I understand a lot of you buggers sometimes don't if I don't ask it so please could you do so but also could you please uh, follow us on Spotify Apple Podcasts all that good stuff in the description it's all there all the full episodes other than this one are on those platforms so uh, yeah thanks for watching mates and uh See you in the next one. You were born in, on the 15th of June, 1945, apparently. And you, you, start, you, you started as a bakery chef at, at Bushels on the 13th of June, 2018. Yeah, it's going well, Oh actually. my God, Aiden, there are so many f***ing posts. Yeah, okay. wait, is it Gra- me? Hey, Wendy's Bunkers Brown, the 22nd of June, 2018. Grandkid is coming over. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you need to compose yourself because Gran- I even I don't know what you're saying. You like. said there you, you've gone into the group again and said the grandkid is coming over. What fun things can I take him to in lower stock? Yeah. <laughs> and then you but another post three days later. <laughs> <laughs> so you must have not had much going on at this point. I in was time. very bored. <laughs> uh, you put <laughs> 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 this is too funny to me. Found this on a pavement near <laughs> near park. If anyone missing important car park, <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was. <laughs> what the? F- <laughs> oh my f- god! That's the most f- up thing you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, oh I, my god I, wanna... I basically posted did I, is anyone missing this and posted a fidget spinner in those stuff one hell of a tone <laughs> got 56 likes 56 <laughs> likes and then uh, and then someone said uh, let's see if there's somebody's only actually <laughs> was being serious um, <laughs> I don't I don't <laughs> <I've been laughs> the thing is all right, I've got no recollection of doing that you, s- <laughs> you, s- you started studying at Bakefield Middle School in the 13th of... So you started a bakery working on the same day as you started school. Well, yeah, I'm trying to get my maths. Oh, my God. <laughs> Aiden, there are more posts. <laughs> Many posts. Right. Think they should put Manchester United down way <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah. Well, on is good. Be good for tourism. <laughs> what you think could be good? What the f*** does that even mean? I don't know, mate. I've got a... Uh... <laughs> You can, it's got three likes and 23 comments. I think I was funnier back then than I am now. <laughs> this is genuinely, like, I, I I really think this summarizes, like, our upbringing. Even though this wasn't, that was only five years ago. We were grown adults at this point of time. I had a, I think I had a job at this point. I was, mate, I was yeah, a full-time. Yeah, you at Morrison's, mate, mate. No, 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 I was a full-time YouTuber at this point. I moved, right, to, yeah. I moved to London six months so before So while this. you were grinding, getting the results, yeah. I was... Sitting down, pretending to be a seventy-year-old woman on Facebook. It's it's probably one of the more um one of your more better achievements, I'd say, because this is genuinely probably one of my favourite things I've ever fucking seen. This is yeah. genuinely fantastic. The other two troll accounts didn't go as well. Oh my! Well, you had another you had another uh, troll account. Yeah, I'll get up for you, mate. Oh my god! <laughs> there you go, mate. Phil McCracken. Phil McCracken. He was born. <laughs> wait, wait, what was my job again? I forgot. 
<laughs> oh my God, can Aiden. you say that? <laughs> that can that be said on the pod? <laughs> Shagger at shagging fat birds. Yeah, boy. It's <laughs> your job. You studied at Wank Nation, and you you live in Prague, Czech. <laughs> yeah, but you're from Wankford. Yeah, I'm well travelled, mate. You, you are a funny guy. That was made in 2019. I think it's a good way to uh, get my creative outlet out without doing any real harm. I think you may have a learning disability. For you, <laughs> I just like with people i think to be fair i think in my time i've also made a fake profile i think at one point we may have both had one age when we were in like school or some sh- it was like trolling but in sort of like quite a harmless way it was until i found out that you your occupation is shaggerish is shagging fat birds well the thing is right <laughs> is that i'm absolutely terrified they're going to bring in that law where you need id to sign up to anything do you because then i can't do stuff like that anymore do, do you, are you still doing stuff like that that's yeah. the main worry well i've got an idea actually for the podcast going forward so maybe i should create a new troll account yeah and then just keep us updated every week about what i've managed <laughs> oh, no, to no, do no. you have to that Sorry. no no do do start it this week we'll we, what should we do it in the real stuff group chat or uh, or should we do it in another in another place i could just join loads of them i think we should find one in like a place we never we don't we've never even well, been no to. idea like in blackpool or something blackpool. or even our oh, mate no america that's the best one i think america i think if these things exist in america i think if anyone is listening to this give us some suggestions yeah on if there's anyone easy to wind up as a yank can it? yeah I, I, can i say that is yank. that a slur what yank, yank. i think that was that like a slur for white americans i think it's fine. I don't, oh well Oh, I don't know. But moving on. <laughs> but <finally>. Sorry, Yanks. <laughs> Phil McCracken. We, we move into other white Americans. We're speaking about the creator of the Mr. Beast burger, Mr. Beast. Yeah, the guy that today won the inter- internet XD. <laughs> he, if there was like a lot, I, I, I've said it before, but I, I like him. But he is like, honestly, if they went in a lab and they were like, we need to create a human embodiment of Reddit, it, w- it would be that man. The last video he did, I thought it was quite nice. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy about it. That's what I want to speak about because pretty much, if you didn't know, Mr. Beast, he cured a thousand people of blindness i don't know if i haven't actually fully watched the video but if i mean if you cure one person of blindness, it's a pretty decent thing to do it's just quite nice seeing rich people not be like douchebags for once isn't it yeah and i guess a lot of people have gotten mad for like a multitude of reasons and like i think the th- oh, but firstly i say i think what mr beast did was actually a good thing like i i, I'm, I can't say if, if, I, if i'm really gonna sit here and be like miss um yeah i think it's a bad thing that mr beast made people um not not blind and to be fair I, I don't think anybody is saying that. I think they're saying the premise of it being a video is the bad thing. Yeah, because there's videos like that are better than where it's like, let's see how long Chris MD can stay in this circle. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. If you're going to spend loads of money on stuff, that is a good thing to spend loads of money on, right? Yeah, and I think people are like kind of mad, but uh, mainly because it's like, well, firstly, f- people were really mad that Mr. Beast didn't in the video go into like the introspective like details of why why this thing exists, like why there are blind people and how they could get the surgery, but capitalism prevents them. I'm like is anyone really expecting mr beast to go on like some like some communist rant in his videos because firstly mr beast isn't like a communist or a socialist i think the guy's quite clearly a capitalist isn't he mate he is mr capitalist yeah like he, <laughs> mate he is literally like the gen z uh, like elon musk or something you know what yeah I mean? he is just mate he is like <laughs> i know I'm, I'm not gonna say it because I shouldn't be calling someone Stalin. <laughs> Did you just say Mr. Beast is Stalin? Well, like, like, I think that's what people actually want him to be. Like, like I don't... chaotic neutral. So, so who is like the Lenin of, of you two? <laughs> Get dead comedy shorts came but then, um Came Stalin. <laughs> no, what's his name? Go Frankie on. McDonald. <laughs> Frankie Frank- McDonald is the Lenin. <laughs> Frankie McDonald gets a nice pen. I shouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, so people got mad, basically. I guess they were mad that, firstly, he recorded it and put it on his video. Now, I think that's, like, a pretty silly argument because the reason Mr. Beast is in the position he's in to do this is because he records the good things he does and puts them on YouTube. And, yeah, like, I get it. Like, there is a bit of a, oh, it's it's clearly, like, meant to be promoting him it's clearly meant to make him look better but at the end of the day i'm happy to take like i thought it was done in a nice way though i, I hate them videos where it's like someone just handing out pizza to slices to like homeless, to, like, people, homeless people like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's creative it's like doing a lot of like genuine long-term good for yeah, people. Yeah, yeah i get the argument of people being like it shouldn't have to be like that in society like yeah if there is like a chance somebody can recover from blindness they should yeah. be able to, but we, let's be real we don't live in an ideal world yeah but then the, the 
because like the, you've got the argument that just all charity shouldn't exist because the state should be doing the job properly. And the thing is, I think me and you of all people agree, yes, the state should be doing their job, but they're not doing their job and they're not going to do their job and yes. it's only getting worse. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get mad at the rich guy for coming out and actually doing something decent. Go up to one of them thousand blind people that he cured and ask him, say, do you think he should have made a YouTube video about what he did for you? Yeah, I mean, firstly, if beforehand they wouldn't even be able to watch the YouTube video. It's just anyway. nice, isn't it? Like, if if we can't have that, you can't have like children in need in the UK or <laughs> comic relief. You can't have any of these things if you're going to beef Mr. Beast making some kid see again and giving him a Tesla. <laughs> like, the, it's the, just. I, I think the one thing from it though, which I've brought up to you, is is <laughs> it's the thumbnail. The thumbnail, uh, yeah. The thumbnail is quite quite psychotic. The thumbnail it? looks like Charlie Bucket when he gets the golden ticket. <laughs> <doesn't> <laughs> it's, it instead, it's like, mate, congratulations, you got non-stinky eyes anymore. <laughs> Pov, you've just stumbled across Wendy Bonker's brain on Facebook. <laughs> Sorry. God, like, I can't really fault it. Like, yeah, the concept is <laughs> is like the kid's eyes are the focus and stuff, but... <laughs> Mr. Beast is like, he's got a gun. Look at the f***ing <laughs> camera. <laughs> Take the fun now, we're going to take your eyes away again. Like, this is what I tweeted the other day. It's like, all these people are getting mad at Mr. Beast. It's like, the next video is, I made a thousand, like, able-seeing people f blind. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he just, it's like, he's, it's like a f Saw movie. <laughs> They've got, like, scoop their eye up day. That's getting a bit gross. Mate, but. You, you could do a, uh, probably a buddy's podcast video quite realistically where it says, we made a thousand people's depression get worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> like his his thumbnails are just f mental, yeah. <laughs> mate. He has a chronic amount of bogeys coming. Out. Yeah, mate, he's got bloody ice bogeys. <laughs> what the f is that thumbnail? <laughs> Hey, that's um, the biggest pog face I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, just show us some more Mr. Beast thumbnails. Well, where's he getting all this money from? Well, this Benefit is, fraud. <laughs> well, this is the thing. A lot of people have come in also to be like, as much as we can praise it, where is his money coming from? He's He's got an LCC, he's business expense and things. But I'm like, well, yeah, Mr. Beast isn't like running this whole thing by himself. He has actual employees. The yeah. guy has like warehouses and stuff. The guy has got, a, he's a businessman. And like, the thing is, I, 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 I will keep saying that I can get, the arguments. I'm not even dismissing arguments, but I'm saying you've got to be f***ing realistic, ladies and gentlemen. You can't just expect the world to randomly become a socialist utopia if that's what you want. It's yeah. not happening. Like, it's, it's just, just not. It's just a nice thing, isn't it? And if you do want that, it's not going to be done overnight, is it? Yeah. So Mr. Beast going around making people see again, honestly, it's fine. It, it, <laughs> it's, it, it, fine. It's, it's a big upgrade from when he went around poisoning people with, with Carl's grilled cheese and uh, <laughs> and Chan Chandler's double cheeseburger. <laughs> I, I was actually going to order you a Mr. Beast burger before this and whip it out, but... It, <laughs> whip it out? Mate, I think the branch was closed in my area. Was it? Mate, probably because it was... Health like a, and safety. Mate, it's genuinely like... that. People go on about Chernobyl. They need to do it. They need to do like an actual show about Mr. Beast burger in... In, in bow nobody has ever stepped foot in bow other than for mr beast burgers but <laughs> even just the name of them you've got the beast style burger the chandler style burger you've got the carl's deluxe grilled cheese and honestly i'm really just wondering because you've, you've i think you told me you've eaten the mr beast burger haven't you it, it gave me <laughs> like diarrhea to a proportion of where i was slightly concerned that i may have to go to the doctor and I, i'm not even kidding Ugh. i took a photo of the burger beforehand and tweeted it and i was like it if it looks like someone's taken a shit in my what if you get the gp appointment and you walk in and it's mr beast <laughs> and it says dr beast is waiting to see you we're gonna, we're gonna give you your, your eyesight back fraser and i go for mr beast I've, I've already got eyes and he says not anymore <laughs> <laughs> Pulls him out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he just does that. <laughs> <laughs> she pokes, gouges her eyes out with his fingers. <laughs> this, uh, like the thing is, right? These these kids before this this video weren't actually blind. Yeah, all thousand people had twenty twenty vision, <laughs> and then he went up to <laughs> he went up to undeveloped countries and just started stabbing people in the eyes. <laughs> don't, don't think why, that's gonna make why, it in. <laughs> why, why does he need to go to underdeveloped countries to stab stabbing somebody in the eye in a de in a is developed? This is that even a politically correct term in a country? I guess so. In a country, yeah, I think it's developing. If he went to like Prague and stabbed somebody in the eye, it, their eyes are still gonna be blinded. And just because they have like skyscrapers there doesn't mean that they're they're immune to blindness. Yeah, I know, but it just adds to the like Mystique. sadness, doesn't it? Um, but after this, after with the backlash, Mr. Beast responded saying, <laughs> should I run for president? And if there is one thing that would finally make me 
shoot myself it would be if i if you see you imagine one day mr beast is in the white house mate unironically i would rather have mr beast as president than donald trump what about if it's mr beast and joe biden running up against each other who mr. are beast. you voting for? Are, you, are you seriously voting for mr beast because i i feel like his first might like his first like thing that he would do is probably like make elon musk like manager of like everything i really want to know if, if elon musk and mr beast well, i've just decided the world's gone to absolute pot in the last 10 years and i think it's only going one way and it's downhill. So whilst we've, whilst we've got like another like five, ten years, probably max, everyone on the earth before like something stupid happens. He, he's going to do a video sometime soon though. Like my prediction is he's going to do like a I survived somewhere sort of video. And it, it's going to be the point of where people are like, Mr. Beast, Jimmy, this is a bit f***ing far. Like he's going to be like, I survived a week in <laughs> or something like that. And he's just f***ing like stood like outside, like there's like riots against the government and then mr beast is just in the middle of it like handing out carl's grilled cheese what if it's like i survived a week on mars and the video is just him <laughs> not even in a spacesuit, just on mars <laughs> going, going. <laughs> he, he, he does like a live stream and it's just like and it's like he does he's got the intro just pre-recorded and it turns to the stream and it's just you know in that south park episode when they send the manatee to the moon and it just gets there and it's just dead <laughs> <laughs> he just he just switched to the, to the mr beast cam on mars and he's just like <laughs> mr. <laughs> mr beast be like if we get one billion subscribers i'm gonna walk into the sun <laughs> <laughs> that's just translating to if i get a million subscribers i'm gonna f- kill myself <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be a very beast. Feel like that Simpsons episode where Homer's head explodes and Bart's when they're in the plane going to the sun. I mean, to be fair, mate, if Mr. Beast ran for president, if he <laughs> if he made it so we get a Mr. Beast perk once a week, like Chippy Fridays, I I probably vote for him. Fraser, if you could make up a one concept for a Mr. Beast video, yeah, and you get to do it all yourself, you get to plan it all yourself, you get all the money from it. It can be as wacky and far fetched as you like. Yeah. What is what concept are you going for? I feel like if we're going all, all out there, maybe just <laughs> Mr. Beast just like lets off a nuke or something. But this is where it goes wrong. This is where Mr. Beast gets cancelled because he accidentally drops the nuke on like whales or some shit. Like he thought he was dropping it in the Atlantic, <laughs> but like they're, they're, they're on about Barry Island and they're looking up and then suddenly it's just like. It's like this nuclear silo is just falling down, and on the f- on the side panel of it, it's just that fucking face. <laughs> That's where your head went, is it? Yeah. That's what you'd do. Mr. Beast just kills an entire country, just wipes it out. You're sick. If you got you got an option of anything you could do, and that's what you come out with. He's gonna do it one day, mate. There's, so you're I, just I getting, saw a tweet out, you're just getting the idea out of his head. One of the critiques of Mr. Beast is that he's they, 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 it was like the thumbnail and the idea of the blindness video was psychotic, and I I do agree that there is like a level of like. <laughs> He is. He must be a little bit nutty. I I can't say why. I think it is just his face in the thumbnails, and I think he is one day just go to t- just go on a villain arc where he becomes like what's the guy from Superman, the bald guy, Hank. <laughs> He's Mr. Beast is not becoming Hank Schreier from Breaking. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is Mr. Beast's final video. He just goes. <laughs> Balls. Mr. Beast loses his minerals. <laughs> <laughs> what would your uh, wild idea be for the Mr. Beast Empire? I'm glad you asked me. Go on. You were waiting um, for me to ask. I know you yes. were. I, I didn't want to get there. But I would there. get 10 famous YouTubers, yes. right? And they'd have to be completely stark naked, right? You put them in a, on a sports hall or something, right? Yeah. You lock all the doors. No, you don't lock all the doors, Where actually. Is this going? That would right. Sorry, you don't lock all the doors. Where are you going? Every with this? time last one to poop wins <laughs> a billion dollars. And they all just have to stay there. And as soon as they poop on the floor they have to leave. And that, that would be the the return of the YouTube poops. <laughs> the intro, the intro scene is just Mr. B. Squat. <laughs> Mate, there was nothing more that I want to see than I dubs curling one out. Dream. Getting out of Dream Burger. He's just the first like twenty seconds actually. It's just them like guzzling a hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Dream. Bedrock. <laughs> Wait, we'll get Nico Avocado in there. 
I've seen that man's bum hole already. I don't, I don't need to see his poo as well. So after they after they take this yeah. this dump in the hall and they were not, wait wait who actually gets the billion? Is it the biggest dump? So the idea is that you're trying not to poo. Oh okay. So, so they must. Hold, you're, you're naked. You're trying to hold your poops in. Um, if you poo, you have to leave. You're not allowed to leave and poo. By the way, you can only leave the room once you've pooped. Yeah. Um. So that's one of the loopholes. So like people don't have to poop. The reason they're naked is that so everyone can see the poop. Um, you can pixelate out. Um, do, oh, it, do, do you understand the concept? I'll explain it again if no one gets the picture right. So you get 10 YouTubers. Um, any YouTubers you want in the video, particularly Fraser? <laughs> My strokey dad. <laughs> right. You want uh, your strokey dad. Mr. Shurs, bro. Mr. Shurs, bro. Fucking Seth Rogen. Yeah. And um, <laughs> James Marriott. James Marriott. Okay. All right. Big Jim gym dog yeah somebody is but listening to this in the car right now <laughs> as soon as you poo there's no way this is getting out in the full format it is, it is. okay and the last one to poo wins a billion dollars <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what is wrong with you where the f did that even come from you've just for f over five minutes straight not even with me saying a basically anything on a tangent i've got a lot of demons <laughs> in my head uh, they just need to come out one podcast at a time. I mean, what 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 does Mr. Beast call the series? Because it, it has to be a series because it's too good of an uh, idea to only do gonna, once. Uh, YouTube poops. <laughs> so it's gonna be good. And then he gets yeah. sued for hey, stealing YouTube wait, poop. Let me just get comfy. He is gonna call it Poo Tube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> give go on, give the give me the intro. What how, how's he gonna do the intro? And I'll, I'll, and I'll, it's got to end with a fart noise, and I'll do the noise. Okay. Okay, all right. We locked ten people in a half a basketball cart. The last one to poo wins a billion dollars. <laughs> that's that's so sick. It was a bit squelchy. Should we hit him up and get him to do it? After Mr. Beast uploads this, um, <laughs> uploads episode one of Poo Tube. Yeah. Uh, he actually gets like a lawsuit in the email, and he has to change. We changed. Uh, we made a thousand people no longer blind to. We made nine hundred ninety nine people no longer blind because after one of the people saw the video, he just reblinded themselves because yeah. <laughs> he couldn't deal with that. Shit. More. But I guess I guess that's our take on the Mr. Beast situation. Also, every because they'll do multiple episodes, right? Yeah. Every episode, the prize would get bigger, but the poo from the last episode doesn't leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll do a. Um, this is like the origin to like. This is how the Last of Us started. This is like then, the fungi. Mate, he'll get a, a deal with browsers. The um, what the the, right, what? He'll, and what? They'll, they'll do like a series where it's the same concept, but it's not pixelated, and it's gonna be called <laughs> Beast Extra. No, it's gonna be called Poo Boob. <laughs> oh my f god! Do you send this podcast to your like, like if somebody says, "What do you do on the weekends?" Do you ever have to send this or something? I send it to my close mates. If work ever find out about this, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, you are. I can't even take. That, imagine me trying to take this to yeah, the union. Steal, mate, they'll steal the poo tube idea and send it to Mr. <laughs> 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 imagine me going to the union, going like they're threatening to sack me for this. What well, um, what do you think you could do? There, and then they'll go, oh, why are they trying to sack you? And it's like, oh, just watch this, mate. And I'll show him the video. He'll come back and go, we've got nothing for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and he just hands me the P forty five. He's going, it's not looking good, mate. It's not he's, looking good. He's going, stay here while I call the police. <laughs> I um I'm sad. Uh, this whole this whole segment has just made me feel depressed. <laughs> Where did this come in? How did this get into your mind? Like these, an idea of <laughs> not only did you say poo in a room, but also the poo remains in the room. That's how messed up this I, is. I um two factors. One of them is I am slight like very slightly hungover. Yeah. And two is mental illness. Yeah, I can I can see that. I should we should move on from this. I think this is okay. this this has been going on far too long. Um, we're gonna we're gonna continue going into. Um, some more content we spoke about uh the lgbt issues of the world and i think we need to move on to speaking about more so allow me just to get a thumbnail up for you so obviously you watched the recent last of us episode i've watched episode three i yeah. watched number four when i first heard about this episode i was like first thing i heard about it is it's very gay and like obviously <laughs> i don't know well, why is that even funny it's very gay but it's, it's the gayest thing i've ever seen yeah but but, but like this is the thing i and was... i've shagged your dad <laughs> mate he just had a stroke absolutely 
<laughs> yeah, I, I gave him a stroke. <laughs> oh my god. You you've really gone too far there, haven't you? That was one moment where we were like this this might have just this might be the end. <laughs> Get out of my flat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I heard about this and when people said it was gay, I was like when when like a representation is done in a lot of media, like as somebody that likes like, you know, like representation, it can be done very cringily. Yeah. And I was kind of worried that it would be like a big cringe fest, but no, it was done like if there was like a way to do like gay representation, absolutely perfect. Like It was quite weird because I've never played the Last of Us game, same. so I don't even know if like these characters are actually in it they are and they are, are they? yeah it's, okay. it's not as it's not how it is in this show like it's like a there you could you find out their story by like the hidden notes and stuff like that but it's like if they translated oh, really? those notes into the actual story on screen sort of thing oh that's pretty cool yeah yeah oh, like it genuinely is one of the best episodes of anything i yeah. think i've ever seen yeah no genuinely and I, I don't i don't watch too much tv to be honest but oh. like that is that actually it takes quite a lot for me to be so invested in yeah, something yeah, yeah. that actually like makes I didn't me- expect to be that invested and I think the one thing I really liked is like I was kind of worried that it was just going to be an offshoot story that didn't connect but it actually connects and it like yeah. it, people will be like oh it doesn't contribute to the story but it's like no it does because like they get all the guns and the supplies and like you may think that doesn't mean much but like in that world it clearly does I think it does also like the concept of where they're just walking about in a load of barren wasteland most of the time. It's hard to do that without it being incredibly boring. Yeah, you so. don't want to, like a Walking Dead thing. I think having I love more of these sort of episodes of individual stories. If they did like an offshoot series where it was like that, I would mate that would be. So, oh yeah, it was quality. I, like it, like it did feel like a completely different show. Yeah, but then they weirdly connected it, which but, worked really well. But the the thing is, I I've been on TikTok and there have been some like insane comments. Somebody there was a TikTok of this guy who's like not even a conservative or anything. He's just like a comic book film TikToker who like. Like, he's one of those people that put text above their head and don't actually say anything and just kind of like stare at the screen and go like that. Have you ever seen these people on TikTok? Yeah, I have. And I, I don't want to think <laughs> about him again. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, he's got like so many things like, this just happened in a new Marvel film, like a text above him. And then the next one was just, last episode was a two out of ten. I don't know why, but it just made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I was like, mate, like you are a brave man to post that on your TikTok it's account. It's quite sad. I saw so many comments oh i'm gonna stop watching the show now just not for me yeah yeah uh, even though like it dead probably not gonna happen again but there was this channel there's this channel which i sometimes just watch out of like fascination and this is their latest video well one of the latest it says <laughs> the last of us episode three everything is gay and then the next one they've just done is the last of us director admits to tricking fans into watching gay love story <laughs> <laughs> neil Druckmann, the guy that created the last yeah. of us has just sat there like scheming how he can make people watch a story about like men who mate that's so horrible but it, I'm, I'm glad Jurgen Klopp is so open about his homosexuality it, it was weird how he went from the, he went from Jurgen Klopp to Jordan Peterson in like 20 <laughs> years but it also says a lot that some guy gets cancer and then looks like Jordan Peterson <laughs> <laughs> mate that is what a meat based based diet does to you at the end of the day you end up loving cock and you also become a cancer patient <laughs> But let's let's take a look at this video. I've watched it. I can't really remember what he says, but uh, I'm, I'm sure it's some pleasant things from this from this match. Episode three, in its own right, I thought was somewhat entertaining. But when you actually look at the people behind it and you look at the agenda that they're trying to push, what fucking agenda is there? It's just like, like realistically, you got to think about this, right? Like gay, gay people have always it's not an, they've right, always gay is not an agenda. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's just something I don't get when people speak about like sexuality agenda. They're like you're pushing an agenda. It's like mate, no, that is lit- quite literally who somebody is. Like that's that's not an agenda. That is just an agenda. Is like oh, this color is better than this color. Like, pink is better than blue. Like that. That's an agenda. But like saying. Being gay is an agenda. That's not an agenda, mate. You get companies and stuff that, like, sometimes very clearly are just, like, box ticks in. Yeah, like, virtue signaling. Box ticking. That's not what's happening in this episode. No, no, no. no. Like, I I completely, like, so you'll get, like, a company, right, who in in one country they'll have, like, a rainbow flag Twitter profile, but then the same company will have another Twitter account in another country where it's not acceptable, really, like, commonly to be gay, and they won't have the rainbow flag there. That's, like, prime virtue signaling. And I completely get these things exist. But this isn't that. This is just... A, no, a story no. about two people loving. There is no difference here to a a, a, a guy loving a woman or a woman loving. I was a guy. about to make the exact same. Wasn't point. in the last. I, I, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but wasn't in the last episode literally it, the person. Spoiler alert! But in the last episode, again, spoiler alert. Stopping if you don't want to hear spoilers. Three, two, one. 
In the last episode, when somebody died, I'm pretty sure that was like a love interest or something at least of of the of Joel, right? Oh yeah, Joel and Tess were very much together. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. I, 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 there, there was no, there was no. Oh, there's a woke agenda. It was like, nah, they're just in a relationship, and it's like meant to. See- oh yeah, like as a, as soon as like it's gay, people get all funny about it, and it's, it's just annoying to see like the outrage. And what annoys me the most when stuff like this happens is people that go, ah, oh, everything's gay now, isn't it? But in yeah. reality, it's like. Not everything is gay. Like, let's be real. I reckon, like, in terms of like homosexual, like, uh, like relationships in media in comparison to straight, it's like ninety nine to one. Like, there's ninety nine straight relationships and one. I'm not saying there's more than one, but like, you know what I mean. Like, in like yeah. on a scale level, you know what I'm saying. It reminds me of when I was in work, and one of my coworkers said, "Oh, you can't watch a DFS video anymore without there being an interracial couple in it." And I just think, why do you care? But also, the, <laughs> thing, the thing is, right? These things are like the, these um like being let's say these things, the okay? K people like that people these people are very like a lot of people who complain about this sort of thing being like there's too many gay people like everything's gay now it's like the only reason they think that is because they are severely uncomfortable at the sight of gay people being gay yeah. and they all hyper fixate on it and forget the fact that they are also surrounded by everyone who, who else is straight you know what it I also mean? makes you come off as very gay and denial <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, i am um, I didn't like that thing where they were being a bit gay. <laughs> like, mate, if you want to suck up, you that can suck That was the campest thing I've ever seen. No, but you know what I mean? People seem really nervous. Then you understand that this is not about just telling a story. Telling a story that's going to benefit the overall story. This is about Neil Cuckman pushing the agenda that he couldn't push when he originally made The Last of Us. That is also not true. They literally do exist in the, in, in the game. And there is literally a scene where one of the met dudes says that, yeah, they were together. So it's like, yeah. you're chatting, chatting shit pretty much really made the last of us because it wasn't universally acceptable like it is now he's just said that back when the last of us came out it was socially not acceptable to be uh, that gay in media but now it is and he's making that sound like a f-ing problem why is that a problem yeah it's it's- like, oh, i miss the days of where uh, you couldn't be gay on screen about people going mental it's not really changed much clearly though has it i think it's even worse nowadays than it was back then yeah honestly it seems like anytime there's any gay stuff going on people it's, are it's because of like Rage, the, right? I guess like what is it called like the social war or something there's a name of it or something but people nowadays like whenever there's anything progressive they lose their mind like they go mental and this is like another example of it I guarantee you if this came out 10 years ago people would not care because the thing is mate in Game of Thrones Pedro Pascal literally yeah. plays a bisexual character who kisses men and women Nobody cared about that back then. I think the whole thing is, up until very recently, there's a, a very heteronormative sort of expectation in society, and is, isn't there? Where like yeah. people assume that being heterosexual is very much like the norm. Or I guess it is to an extent, but like it's always going to be the norm. But I think it's it's also being the norm to be like different to that. Like, yeah, I think it's like f- people na- nowadays, more people are thinking, oh, it is fine to be not. I f- yeah, people feel a lot more comfortable about coming out and being able to actually like be themselves. Yeah, which completely. I think is like can only like be a great thing right with this video so like, i just don't get it it's like what for one like he said literally said at the beginning he thought that the episode was good but it's like it's still a problem because what the, let's be real it is literally just because there's a gay story in there i would say there's underlying homophobic undertones to the criticisms but it's not even like underlying it's just they're very openly blatantly being horrible about gay people. <laughs> I, I haven't watched this new video he's uploaded, but he has done a second one, and uh, he goes, it's called Last of Us Director Admits to Tricking Fans into a Watching Gay Love Story. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. And here we have the director of episode three of The Last of Us, and he says, point blank, he wanted to trick the audience into watching a gay love story. Because it was never about telling a story. It was never about actually honoring the bigger overall story. It was about pushing an agenda. The director's not running around trying to, like, turn everyone gay like Mr. Crocker. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I, I think that right now that Hollywood people genuinely seem to believe that people are trying to make everybody gay and yeah. it's like that's it's just not really the case at all <laughs> like your kid's not going to become gay because they watched the last of us you, know? you end up like being a man having a sex with another man like you're finishing you go oh that was hbo <laughs> look what hbo did <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you reckon Rog watched the episode three of The Last of Us? I hope not. I mean, to be fair, my, my dad had a stroke, as I've said multiple times, and I think it might have actually happened because he got an early screening of The Last of Us episode three. <laughs> I would hate to hear what my dad's comments on that episode would be. And he's actually a really understanding and very, like, 
um quite woke for his age yeah but i still think he'd come out with some absolute nonsense like y- anyone i <laughs> i don't know what i don't know what my dad would think about the last of us episode mm-hmm. three but i'm not i, I don't i don't want to bank on it to be honest with you but um and also he's had a stroke so dad i'm sorry for even speaking to you in this context <laughs> but um all we can really say here is it, it it's not really that deep like it's just love story at the end of the day like it, it, again you thought it was a good episode just move on who cares he's done two videos now about this that like, mate why 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 is it that much of a problem realistically yeah. it's just weird isn't it it's like just pick a different show if you you hate it that much and like i'm sure yeah, but have... he didn't even hate it this is the thing i've seen people <laughs> be like I, I loved it but i just didn't get the gay story it's like mate what's the get it's just a love story you don't come out of like the notebook being like oh i didn't get the heterosexual aspects of that story i think everyone associated with the show would rather you just not watch it anyway if that's your opinion yeah that's the that's the thing about it so whenever there's like lgbt representation people like go crazy like i don't want this in my show it's like i don't think they want you watching the show like i I could genuinely think like they would be happy if you just went away and you just have no good comprehension skills of what the actual show is about especially if you watch that especially with the last of us episode three because that it's it's not as i keep saying it's not like in your face gay like right stuff it's just two dudes being dudes like that's all that yeah. they, they literally just have it's the most normal love story and it's sad and it's it's it, it's it's really well written it's just yeah. it's just good yeah it's not just like two also, men, <laughs> it's not just two men going out for an hour yeah, and all, yeah this, this is the thing when i heard people getting mad i was like what are they are they just noshing each other off for an hour straight it's not that they are literally just growing old together and living in this world yeah. i thought the whole point of the episode was to show the um the world uh, how people in outside of like the areas where joel are getting how they're getting on in the world how they're surviving and i think it was a really good way of showing how people still are surviving and managing to keep their humanity and i didn't and that's not because of like the homosexual part of the story it's just because it's, it's the humanity part you know what i mean yeah i thought the whole best part about the show sorry that episode was the humanity aspect like of everything going on there with the friend like with joel and and, and that woman coming along i oh, sorry i've forgotten her name well, tina tess. tess that's it yeah i i think the whole thing every, in so many aspects was good and i don't think it's just because it's two gay men i think that's ridiculous it's quite good actually i, I think the show's come out at a perfect time oh there's yeah so, there's so many like direct parallels to like the world as it is today yeah yeah when, when they like there's a thing about the government not being able to handle like a pandemic correctly and yeah. i was like this i mean they've written it during or after the pandemic so i imagine i imagine it's quite a lot of on the nose stuff i think but. it's quite yeah clear but also it is very much based on the game oh yeah 100 so, percent. it's no, no it's, it's the it's, same story practically yeah no no, no. i i mate it's genuinely probably the best new show i've watched in years like, yeah. i enjoyed the house of dragon but this is like clear of that for me this is just so enjoyable it's like the walking dead but almost realistic in a way doesn't if that makes yeah, sense yeah i was like the, the reason i stopped watching the walking dead is it does get very slow it, and like, it gets a bit silly i like it i yeah. love the walking dead i'm re-watching it at the moment i'm like season eight but like it becomes like in my opinion a bit unrealistic like how like fascist militias are in the last of us is far more realistic to what it would be with like negan's militia like yeah. there are there is fascist elements in the walking dead but they're never highlighted on whereas in the in the last of us they are very very like direct it's not so far removed is it because like imagine the last of us but there's no monsters and there's been like a nuclear war or something yeah yeah it's something that could i'm not saying it's like likely but it's fascist police states would happen yeah 100 because like that happened in the past like basically like police states have been a thing everywhere when like humanity has fallen in parts of the world and stuff like that's just a thing that happens because people like cling and and like fight fight power which has become like like volatile you know it's like easier to take because like human progress can only go to a certain state probably before it has to fall back down on its knees but, but so, in the midst of all of that there could be two men doing the old sloppy yeah. whoppy and getting cancer <laughs> imagine like there's a nuclear war there's like a hundred people left in like and you die in your closest, and you're just getting no no <laughs> and you're just absolutely furious that you know not that you've lost all your loved ones but there's a gay couple that's formed <laughs> out of all of that i feel like out of everything to take from the episode is getting mad at the gay part when when there's so much there is a lot in the episode you see the state of the world and stuff in in other places and i'm like if you're like if your focus on that is actually the gay part i think you're not watching it correctly like i don't yeah. i didn't come out of that being like wow my views on gay people have, i mean i'm bi but like my views on gay people have changed like no i came out of that thinking that was sick right the most distressing thing about that is not the gay bit it's the bit where you find out how dusty bill keeps his house before he met that guy it's quite because that was horrible mate if he if he went anywhere near um how clean is your house? He would fail every time. Yeah. So basically, Bill, you are a 
and I, I don't know. I don't want to insult Bill because he's, he's just lost his husband. And but to be fair, he's dead as well. <laughs> Bill, I'm glad your husband got cancer, mate. Sorry to say. Uh, but also, yeah. I loved you in Parks and Rec. Please go back. Can we have a minute's silence? For no, Bill? we can't. No, we can't. You know what? <laughs> no, I was going to say something very stupid, but I'm not going to say it. You're a sick. Mate, I was <laughs> like, how am I meant to pay my respects to the fallen? Do you, do you reckon that Bill got a cheeky hand, Jay, before <laughs> when he said, "Don't go up there," because you know it's quite a sight. It's because that's just a skeleton just with his hand runs. No, no, I'm sorry. Right, I'm uh, sorry. that's inappropriate. We should probably wrap things up. I remember Bill's name. What's the other guy called? Like Gary, <laughs> Gary Taylor Fletcher. <laughs> it's not Gary Taylor Fletcher, mate. All right. That's niche reference that is <laughs> blackpool for right, if there's some, like 16 year old teenager in america watching this wondering who the hell gary taylor fletcher i'm not is. even gonna show an image of him they can look at <laughs> themselves you're gonna be thoroughly disappointed um if uh, as you're seeing this fans. just like phil mitchell tweet me with a picture of <laughs> gary taylor fletcher and if you do that you get a big package in the mail i will give everyone a shout out in the next episode if you tweet me a picture of gary taylor fletcher and with that we're going to wrap things up thank you for watching this episode of episode one season two of the buddies podcast yeah thank you and what wait for episode two where a lot of gay stuff happens why no nothing gay is going to happen we're probably going to record it today actually because aiden can't be here next week so no so uh yeah thanks for watching and if you've got a, fi- a final thing for, uh, to say or or nothing yeah i have actually yep. um i would like to say thanks for watching and i'll see you later and mr beast if you are watching this could you comment the correct color of your poo thank you very much cool. cheers bye bye <laughs>